Hey guys, it's Rogaway here and we are doing another tutorial and today we are looking at infrared photography. Now, what is infrared photography? Well, it is a wonderful uh, form of photography that lets you see light that our eyes uh, can't normally see. Uh, but with a special filter in front of our lens, we're able to capture this light and create some pretty stunning results. I'm just going to show you some examples. Let's uh, jump on uh, the web here. Oh, I'm on my favorite website, uh, favorite channel. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick search actually for infrared photography. And let's look at a few images really quick to see what we're talking about. So this is what infrared photography looks like. And I have students who ask me, is this an effect that you could just add in Photoshop? And there are some good tutorials for it. It never really gets the effect perfect. Um, this is what it looks like. So any foliage, any greens or uh, uh, yeah, foliage or life that is, you know, bouncing back green ends up looking almost snowy-like and you get this really neat effect. Here's a really good example of it. A really neat sort of dreamy effect and um, that's why it's so popular. It's, it's an effect that looks really cool and you can pretty much take most uh, regular scenes, or I should say, um, kind of everyday scenes, and turn them into something extraordinary. So let's look at how it's done and how we can process our images um, to get that kind of an effect, because that's not how you're going to see your files come out of the camera right away. All right, so let me just put this down. First thing I want to mention is that when you're doing infrared photography, um, infrared cameras, or sorry, cameras in general, have been designed to block infrared light. So even though we might be using the filter, uh, we have to go for a long exposure to capture that infrared light, otherwise we're not going to see anything. So let's just open up a raw file here and take a look at what it's going to look like out of the camera. What I strongly suggest you do is uh, when you take your photos, um, you probably want to focus on the scene first, compose the scene before you put the filter on, get it all set up, get it focused, switch your lens to manual focus once it's all set up nicely so that it doesn't change, and then put the filter on and adjust the long exposure so that you can uh, get the shot that you want. All right, so when you get your photo out of the camera, this is what you're going to get. It's not going to look very pleasing. It's going to look very red. But you can see that what it's done is it has captured the whites in the foliage, and uh, that's what we're after when we're talking about infrared. I just want to mention really quickly that I take no credit for the sample images here. I'm just showing one that I thought was a good example that I found online. So what we're going to do first off is we're going to set the white balance. That's the first step in getting it to look like the infrareds that we see um, you know, online, for example. So we're going to click our white balance. And in this case, I think the, the clouds would have been pretty neutral. Most times they are. So we're just going to click up in there and that'll get rid of that red cast that um, is spread across the entire image. Next thing you want to do is bring up the exposure in this case, make it a little bit brighter, tweak the contrast to bring out the details more. All right, and any other little adjustments here. And we're not looking at the color of the image because it's still off. Instead, what we're doing is just tweaking it so that the details sort of pop. All right, and again, we don't even really have to tweak our saturation in that. We can adjust that after. 
All right, so we're going to hit open image. Um, oh, I can just make sure that my lens correction is okay and that doesn't even affect it. So we're going to hit open image. And so there's our starting point. And you can see that with that red cast removed, we're getting closer to what we need uh, for an infrared effect. Now, if I go back to my browser, this is how most infrareds are going to look. Very vibrant and very bluish. Um, and again, that's not how it comes out of the camera. You have to create, not create that, but you have to get to that. So the way you do that is in the infrared images, as with any images, you've got channels. And your channels are comprised of, you know, red, green, and blue, usually unless you're in CMYK mode. And what we're trying to do to get that effect, or what most photographers will do to get that effect is they try or they're going most will swap the red and blue channels and that will give you that effect I'm going to show you a way that gives you a little more control over it all right so we're going to highlight that background layer we're going to go to image adjustments and we're going to go to channel mixer and channel mixer will let us adjust those uh, image, or those layers pretty quickly and here's what we want to do we're gonna start with the red we're gonna bring the red down to zero that's going to make the image very bluish then we're gonna bring up the blues to about a hundred and now you get this really weird kind of off colored look then you're going to switch the output channel here to blue. And now you're going to bring up the reds to 100 or so. And you can leave the blue at 100 here as well. And we're going to hit OK. Now you can see we are much, much closer to the result that we want. OK, we're very close to that. Now what we can do is we can go and adjust our contrast. All right, we can just tweak that to make it a little more contrasty. We might want to tweak our uh, saturation, hue and saturation a bit. I want to take some of that saturation out. No, uh, not much, actually, just a bit. And what I like to do to my uh, infrareds is I like to add uh, two things. I like to add a bit of a glow to it. So I'm going to go to Window and Actions. And hopefully you still have this one loaded. Fievel's Gothic Glow. If you don't, go up to the top right, go Load Actions. Okay, load this action, Fievel's Gothic Glow, into uh, Photoshop. And just run the General Interest Glow. And you're going to get this really um, overly done glow. So press Command A and go to Edit, Copy, or Command C. Go back to the original, go Edit, Paste, and then just tweak the opacity of that glow layer until you're happy with the result. This is going to give your photo that dreamy sort of glow effect that most HD uh, most infrareds have. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to flatten our image once we're happy with that. And we're going to add a custom vignette to it as well. I find that this just adds a little more of a, a punch to it. So we've done this before, but uh, here's the steps. Make a new layer. Go to Edit, Fill, fill it with black. Bring your opacity down to 60%. Okay. Add a layer mask. And then with a soft brush. Okay, so take your brush. I'm just going to go with a regular one here, obviously. Set it to zero hardness, and that might be too big, but that's okay. Make sure your foreground color is black, and then just paint the areas that you want to show. 
If I go with a smaller brush, I can kind of control it a little bit better, but that's what I like to do. And then after, I can kind of tweak the opacity of that layer and make it either more defined of a vignette or less, depending on what I like. All right, now I'm going to go back to my background layer. I'm going to click that. And I might do some adjustments again to the hue and saturation just to bring it down or adjust as needed. And there you go. That's what you're going for. That's what a, a good or at least a common infrared image is going to look like. Like I said, um, a lot of people buy infrared filters and they're wondering why their photos don't look infrared once they get them out of the camera. Well, there's a bit of tweaking that needs to be done in order to get that effect and in order to get your images to look the way they should. So just make sure you save that. All right, I'm gonna put it to the desktop. I'm gonna call it infrared. Save. And hopefully that helps. Um, like I said, when you're doing your own images, you're gonna to need to know this in order to get your uh, infrareds to look correct. There is a little file that I'm going to include in the folder. I'll just show you what it looks like. I called it infrared cheats. And in there, let me just find it. It gives you some other tips on how to get different looking infrared images. Um, talks about different things you can do. Just a few different recipes, I guess you could say, on how to create different infrared images. So it shows you how it starts like what we saw. It shows you once you correct the white balance, which is what we did. Shows you what it might look like if you swap red and blue. Again, we looked at a better way of doing it in my opinion. And this is if the red channel um, from the infrared is replaced with the red channel from a color photo. These are just different things that you can try to um, see what kind of an effect you're going to get um, to kind of maybe create a more abstract looking image. All right, so hopefully this helps. Uh, make sure you use it if you are taking infrared photos. Um, yeah, make sure you're, you're applying this to get that effect. Otherwise, your photo will probably look kind of weird. All right, talk to you later.